Welcome back for another episode of the Cardinal Report. I'm Charlie Edward. Later we'll be joined by the men's basketball team, but first, how about the women's basketball team? Moving up a spot to number 23 in the latest D3Hoops.com poll, and leading the way is Tess Goddard, who won her second CCIW Player of the Week honor this season, and the accomplishments don't end there. The Cardinals, as a whole, have won 20 games in a season for the first time since 1984. Back then, the team made it to the Final Four. This season, after beating Illinois Wesleyan 96-81, North Central's expectations get higher and higher. NCC took 39 three-pointers and connected on 13 of them. Godhart scored 24 points, shooting an impressive 9 of 13 from the field. And Kareen Rowe added 17 points of her own in the win. North Central has now locked in a berth to the CCIW tournament, which will be played on February 27th and 28th. The wrestling team did some dominating of their own at Harper College over the weekend. 11 NCC wrestlers finished in the top five at the Harper College Open. Casey McWhorter went a perfect 3-0 through the Open and found himself in the first place match by the time it was all over. A championship match he won with a pin at the 2.51 mark over Duke Bogakovich of Harper. Brandon Malone went 4-1, highlighted by a win in the third place match over Zach McCullough and Howard Beatty finished fourth thanks to a 4-2 record. He came up short in the third place match with Pernavellan Shepard and the wrestling team closes out CCIW dual action against Elmhurst this week. Luke Winder is making news in the pole vault for men's track and field again. Once again, Winder broke his own freshman record with a clearance of 17 feet, four and a half inches. The record was broken at the Olivet Nazarene University Invitational. A meet the North Central College men came into ranked first in Division Three. That mark by Winder tied older brother Josh for fourth in school history and 10th all time as far as indoor marks are concerned. The 4x400-meter relay team finished second with a combined time of 3 minutes, 22.2 seconds. And Femi Oyuwale enjoyed a second-place finish as well, hitting 6 feet 5 inches on the high jump. The distance medley relay, featuring Matt Muth, Richie Russ, Derek Nelson, and Travis Morrison, placed first with a time of 10 minutes, 7.6 seconds. The second-highest time in D3 all season. Up next for the Cardinals, the Chicagoland Indoor Championships on Saturday. For today, we'll welcome in the men's basketball team. Assistant coach Aaron Tickness joins us next, and soon after, guards Jamie Moten and Erwin Henry. This is TCR. finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Back here on TCR and joined now by one of Todd Raritan's assistant coaches and a former team captain, Aaron Tickness. Aaron, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And you were a former player, three years on the team, uh, Final Four appearance in 2013. How do you compare this year's team to that team that you were on? Yeah, well, I mean, first and foremost, our bigs, um, like I was saying earlier, uh, really have stepped up this year. Uh, Charlie offensively and Jack defensively, and from a leadership standpoint for Jack, uh, you know, he's done everything from making sure everyone's at uh, off-season workouts to pushing himself. His game has definitely grown tremendously um, since I've seen him play when he first got here as a freshman. Um, and then at the guard standpoint, we got a couple transfers in. Jamie Moten um, has really stepped up for us this year. He's hurt right now, but um, we, didn't we didn't have a point guard like him. So like, there's, there's similarities and differences uh, from that Final Four team to this team this year. I think what's so fascinating about it is that you played on that team and now you're coaching players from yeah. that team today. What's yeah. it like coaching players that you used to call teammates. <laughs> well, it's different because you know, you know, Charlie and Jack. You know, I, I'll I'll maybe say some forward to them. You know, proving a point or trying to make a coaching point. But then you know, five minutes later, I'm like, I didn't want to hurt their feelings because we're still friends off the basketball court. So, from that standpoint, it is a little different. But um, everyone else that you know that are, that I've just known as as a coach to them has really understood what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to uh, do here at North Central, and have really understood and listened to what I've had to say. Well, in late January, you had that uh, skid, four out of five you guys mm -hmm. lost. Obviously, you must have had a lot to say then. What do you think, <laughs> what do you think caused the, the losing skid there? Um, you know, we, did, we lost our identity as a team, I think. Uh, first and foremost, I always preach rebounding as a big man coach. Um, if you win the rebounding battle, typically you win the basketball game. And we didn't do that most of those games. 
Um, and then turnovers were also a huge factor as well. Uh, we had to make sure we take care of the ball better. Um, but, you know, we, we, we think we're starting to right that ship and turn it around. Um, obviously, our last result wouldn't say as such. Um, but we have a big three games coming up, and we have a great opportunity to make, make some um, noise in the CCIW. There's times in a season where one team can kind of set your season on fire. You lost a, a game to start that skid to Augustana. Do you think they kind of were the reason you lost your identity, maybe losing that first game to them, and then after that all the losses kind of started rolling through? Well, well, Augie, you know, Augie is a tremendous team. They're a tremendous basketball program in general. And they, you know, if, if you're not on your A game every time you play them, you're going to get beat. And, you know, they, you are right. They did, you know, show us some flaws. We, we weren't the greatest rebounding team, like I said, with the turnovers. Um, but once, you know, once we, we, we definitely uh, forgot you know how to rebound and we have to you know regroup and get back to what got us you know to a final four to a ccaw championship which is rebounding and defense well you know you come back and you ended up beating augustana mm -hmm. on the road what did it take to win that game you know uh, again defense and rebounding but most importantly our, our leadership you know we had guys step up jamie was out that game um and looking at on paper, you would assume that, you know, without your starting and leading scorer, Jamie Moten, that you wouldn't have a chance in that game. Mm -hmm. But we came together as, as a group. And, you know, Erwin Henry stepped up that game. Kevin Hahn came off the bench, gave us tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, point production off the bench. And, um, you know, Jack Burchette, can't say anything more than the kid. Kid sprained his ankle during the game and kept playing, hit two clutch free throws at the end, and also had a huge uh, left handed bucket at the end to seal the game in overtime. You know, the game like that, you have to imagine. It takes so much emotion, mm -hmm. drains it out of you to win a game like that. You think that kind of affected the team going into the game against Illinois Wesleyan? Maybe that's why they might have lost so poorly? Yeah, so um, I also think, you know, when, when you beat a good team, a lot of times you have the tendency to just, you know, let, lay on your morals and, and, and think that, okay, we just beat the number six team in the country. Now, August, or Wesleyan is going to be no problem. You know, some of our guys may have done that, and, and the, the, the box score obviously showed that that's probably what happened. And, we definitely went down to Bloomington and uh, got our butts kicked. Well, it takes a lot to beat a team like Augustana. Maybe it took everything North Central had. On this week's What's the Word, we find out whether or not that affected the team going into the game against Illinois Wesleyan. Yeah, I feel like it could have a little bit of an effect on us, on the energy and the intensity that we came out with, especially after a big win. Sometimes you have the, the like notion to settle a little bit, and I feel like we may have done that. We just didn't come out with enough energy, so yeah, it could have been a could have been a factor. Well, Illinois Wesleyan is a pretty good program. You know, they usually have they usually play great at home. You know, uh, I don't think we beat them at home in the last couple of years, and they just came out ready to play, and we didn't that day. So I mean, next time we see them, we'll be ready to play, and I'm sure they'll be ready too. At the end of the day, I think it comes down to the energy and the fact that they hit shots and made plays when we didn't, and they went on runs and we couldn't stop them. Yeah, they just, you know, they ran us off a lot of the screens. They, they execute their plays pretty well. I mean, they, they come off screens hard and they came off screens ready to shoot. They made a lot of shots. You definitely have to put everything you can to beat a team like that. And any given night, you know, they could come out and they could play great or they could, they could not. Even though they beat us, you know, they caught us while we were down. I think we'll be ready to play. I think we'll, we had a certain level of toughness in practice today. And I think we should step up to the plate for the last three. Right, going back to the win against Augustana, you know, in a win like that, you're always going to have one or two guys that really stand out. Who was the star of that game? Um, well, to me, uh, honestly, it was a team effort. Uh, I never like to say one person was the reason why we won or lost a game. Uh, but, you know, when Kevin Hahn comes off the bench and scores for us and gives us that opportunity um, to extend the lead, and, you know, when, he, when he's hitting shots and, you know, when our freshman, Erwin Henry, and, you know, Joe didn't have any points, but he's definitely a leader. Joe Canal is a freshman on our team. Um, and he steps up and, you know, gets people to, to into their spots and where they need to go. Um, but I guess if you had to pick one, I would probably say Kevin Hahn simply because of, you know, his scoring outburst. And we needed every point we could get with Jamie being out. And, um, you know, uh, um, we really, like I said, our bench hasn't been producing as well as it probably should have been. And Kevin definitely stepped up that game. Well, you know, the first game you lost it. And then the next one you come back and beat him. Mm -hmm. What was the difference in terms of X's and O's Augustana presented to you that allowed you to really take over the second game and win in overtime like you did? Um, you know, I think... It's X's and O's is only goes so far. At the end of the day, it's more of a, you know just a, a defensive mentality. We really got back to what you know North Central basketball is about, and that's you know locking people up, playing good solid defense for 40 minutes, rebounding the heck out of the ball, and then executing. You know our, our game plan um, for Augie was you know to slow the game down, slow the pace down because they love to you know as soon as they catch a rebound, one two pass, get up the court. Um, 
we definitely, we, we typically uh, send four or five guys to the glass. We, we sent only three to that game, so they couldn't, you know, uh, outlet that pass and get out of transition. Um, so, I mean, I think from an X's and O standpoint, we, we executed very well, which, was, which, was, which, which is what led to the victory. Well, you know, they've lost three out of their last six games. I think for Augustana, <laughs> that's an awful lot. Yeah. What's changed all of a sudden in their season? Uh, realistically, um, you know, you can't take any team lightly in the CCIW, and I think, you know, some teams have that ability to, you know, think, oh, I'm going to walk into North Park and win. And North Park has proven those people wrong this year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's definitely showing in the standings where there's a jumble between, uh, you know, three and seven. So there's, a, there's an opportunity there for everyone every night to get beat. All right, we'll definitely get to all of that after this break. Back for more with Aaron Tickness in a moment on TCR. in your area at 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or yourged.org. Earn your GED diploma and begin your brighter future. Welcome back to the Cardinal Report and still with us is assistant coach Aaron Tickness. Aaron, looking ahead now, we've been talking about the past all of this point. Looking ahead, you got Carthage coming up. Uh, this is a team you beat even during your losing skid. What can we expect for this game? Um, you know, Carthage is always a tough opponent. You know, they have a, they have a great coach who just won his, I think it was his 500th CCIW game. Um, so, you know, you can never take any opponent lightly. I mean, we we, we got to get back to rebounding and defense like we've, we've been preaching all morning. Um, you know, Jack Brichette, Charlie Rosenberg have to get back on track. Um, you know, we have freshmen that need to step up as well. Erwin Henry um, and uh, Joe Cannell as well need to definitely make a huge um, step in the right process because we are looking forward to getting back to that CCIW tournament and it starts we have to we have to win all three and it starts uh, on Wednesday with Carthage. You know I was at practice yesterday and you know every time I'm there it seems like Jack Burchette has something interesting to say. <laughs> at the end of practice he said we can't afford to lose again. Is that something you would echo? Uh, yeah I mean I, you don't ever want to you know as a coach look forward in the in, um, into the future and say you know we, we have to win all three because to win all three, you have to win the first one. So all we're focused on right now is Carthage. Um, they come in, you know, tomorrow ready to go, and we should we should be the same way. Um, at the same token, you know, Jack's probably right. We do need to definitely uh, try and win as all three. But like I said, it starts with Carthage, um, and then we'll build from there. You know, two out of the last three are against teams you've lost to this season. Mm -hmm. You think that kind of adds a little extra pressure to those kinds of games? Uh, pressure and also motivation. You know, we we. We're hungry now because we, you know, we definitely walked in maybe unprepared, um, and then that that starts with the coaching staff and also with our senior leadership. Um, but at the same time, like you said, we, we definitely are you know hungry and we are motivated, ready to go, um, and we definitely have to start again on Wednesday with Carthage. You know, that comes in the games, but in practice lately, it seems like you've had more of a lighter schedule. Is that something you do for the end of the season to rest players and keep them good for games? Yeah, um, coach, that's typically coach's style, um, especially later in the CCW play. You know, we play every Wednesday, Saturday, and um, we've played, like Jack Brichette has played dang near as many minutes as he, as he can pretty much play. Um, so, you know, we, we got to get guys like him and, and Jamie with their rest. You know, Jamie's out with his ankle right now. Um, but you, we do definitely make it a more shooting, a more technical practice instead of, uh, you know, the physical grinded out type practices that you would find earlier in your basketball season. And with Jamie's injury, guys like Brandon White getting extra playing time, mm -hmm. can you describe what it's been like seeing Brandon get a little bit more on the court? Well, I, I got to coach Brandon last year on the JV team, and, and I, I got to watch him flourish there, so I already know what his potential is. And, and with Brandon, it's not, you know, offensively or, you know, it's all about, you know, his attitude and his... Um, when he comes ready to go and, and 
you know, 110% effort, he's you know, as good of a, a three as you'll find in this league. But at the same time, he doesn't have that consistency right now as a sophomore. And he's building and he's getting there. But, uh, you know, Brandon has definitely stepped up in um, a couple of big games. You know, when we beat Wesleyan at home, he had, I think, seven or eight rebounds to lead the game in rebounding. Um, and he has the ability to do that every single night in and night out. It's just that consistency that we need to keep going with him. Well, he's the only player on the men's basketball team not from the Midwest. And the only player that felt true shell shock coming to North Central. His name is Brandon White, and the Discovery Bay, California native, tells us about his transition to Naperville on this week's Cardinal Corner. With the eastern half of the country covered in snow, now might be a good time to say it. Brandon White is from California. I didn't get any offers in California, so my mom sent my tape out here to, uh, to a guy that was helping people get recruited. North Central liked me. California, where people can walk places and bike racks have more than one bike, and construction doesn't invade every territory known to man. I think definitely the people out here are a lot more blue collar than the people in California. The people in California are a lot more laid back, chill, and we have guys like Jack, Coach Raritan, who are a lot more blue collar and get into you, and that's something that I think I needed as a person. For White, it's been pure shell shock. I feel like I'm still honestly getting trying to get adjusted to it even now. I mean, I've gotten, it's gotten a lot easier, but um, I mean, the weather is something that I don't think I'm ever gonna get used to. <laughs> but um, I mean, I definitely, like I said, the people around me have made it a lot easier for me transitioning, but um, it's, it's nothing like California in my opinion. And uh, I mean, you'll catch me there eventually. Though the adjustment process has been a difficult one, White knows it's one that many college students must endure. When you get to college, you have to grow up. You have to, you're on your own a lot of the time, so you have to grow as a person individually. Since the midway point of the season, White has been trusted with more consistent minutes, averaging nearly 13 a game now. So you can say the adjustment is going smoothly. But it was never more smooth than when the team was in Claremont, California on December 4th, 2014. It was kind of a change of pace, and uh, it was kind of cool to be on the other side of things instead of uh, being the new person out here. Though the sophomore's future after basketball won't be in Naperville, his footprints in the snow are a long and winding reminder of his progression, a maturation process that took him through the campus of North Central College. So I think, you know, looking at Brandon, the one question I have for you is, is it immediately obvious to you, the California vibe? Can you feel it right away? Right? <laughs> yeah, um, you can with this, you know, he's got that kind of laid back style and his hair is, you know, a little afro -y, I guess you could call it, but um, <laughs> no, you definitely do feel it because like I was saying, you know, sometimes, you know, it'll be a very serious moment and, and, and you know, Brandon will come up to me and, and crack a joke <laughs> and he'll be like, all right, you know, he's definitely not a Midwest, you know, grinded out type of guy. He's a California laid back, but at the same time, he tries to get the job done, but you can definitely tell he's not from the Midwest. Well, you know, with Jamie Moten's injury, you know, I feel like Erwin Henry obviously getting more playing time too. Mm -hmm. With Irwin coming in, how does that kind of change the floor? I mean, what are we seeing? You know, who's getting extra playing time? Who's being slotted into places we might not typically see? Uh, yeah, well, you're going you're gonna to see Irwin Henry um, definitely stepping up. He's going to have to, you know, uh, put the ball in the basket a little more with Jamie being out. Um, but at the same time, we, we rely on Irwin's you know, defense because, uh, I mean, I personally believe that there's no guard that can get by him in the CCIW um, when he's at his best. Um, but at that point, you know, like I said, he's just a freshman. Um, you're going to see Joe Canal stepping into a role um, of, of leadership as well. He's been our starter uh, since conference has started. Um, and you're going to see guys like Kevin Hahn coming off the bench and scoring a little bit more. Um, big Mike Rinke, um, he's a guy who's definitely had to come in and really help us out a lot. Um, you know, Charlie or Jack is in foul trouble. He's a guy who steps in and he's 6'9", so there's, you can't teach size, they always say. So uh, when you put him in the game, He's going to you know, create a difference either one way or the other. So. Yeah, it seems like Jamie Moten is more of a guy you can expect to work from the outside. Irwin has more of a slasher mentality, get to the basket. Is that something you see too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a product of the Chicago Public Schools uh, you know, basketball that he's played in. He's, I mean, the CCIW, or I mean, excuse me, the Chicago Public League has definitely gotten him ready for the CCIW um, and, and those games that he's performed in, you can obviously tell. What are the differences between relying on Irwin, though, as opposed to when Jamie's in the game? How does that, I mean, is it more, you know, are you making the game plan more centered around getting to the basket? Um, well, I mean, if, like Coach Redden's system, first and foremost is to get the ball inside. 
Um, but then after that, once they start doubling, then yeah, Irwin, Irwin has to have that role where he you know, might have to step in, into a 15-footer or pump fake, get to the lane, and then create, some, create something for Jack or Charlie. Um, and he definitely has that ability to do that for us. My last question for you is about Elmhurst. They seem like a team that really came onto the scene out of nowhere. I mean, how did they get good so suddenly? You have them on your schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what made them so good all of a sudden? Well, I mean, as a coaching staff, we, they do the CCIW, uh, you know, preseason ranking poll, and, you know, me and a couple other the assistant coaches, I, when I saw them in the summer, I knew that they were going to be a, a solid team because they have, you know, they have three or four bigs, and in CCIW, you have to have at least four solid bigs to play. Um, and compete in, at a high level at the CCIW. They have the, the Weast kid who's a very good uh, guard and then they have a couple other shooters around them and when you have four bigs in the CCIW that gives you the opportunity to, to grab rebounds, to play inside, to be more physical and it's, it's a, I mean it's just a proven fact that if you have you know those solid, if you win those rebounding battles and you win um, the turnovers and um, the hustle stats you're gonna win games in the CCIW and Elmhurst has definitely, and Coach Baines has done a great job over there since he's been back. Well, Aaron, I wish you the best of luck the rest of the way, and thanks Thank for your time today. Thank you. All right, well, on the other side of this break, a current star and a future star. Joining us next on the Cardinal Report are Jamie Moten and Erwin Henry. Stay with us. So they say it's a man's world? anybody's name on it. While well, they were out doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. We changed all that! Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Back on TCR and now welcoming in guards Jamie Moten and Erwin Henry. Guys, great to have you on. Thanks for having us on the show. And Jamie, we'll start with you with this question. It's really the question I've been asking everyone on the team lately. Uh, with the win over Augustana, do you feel like it left you guys a little bit emotionally drained going into the loss against Illinois Wesleyan? Going into the game against Illinois Wesleyan, we just took it a little bit lightly because we had beaten them the first time. I feel like we kind of thought that maybe they haven't got, as, got better just like we have gotten better. So I think we went in just, just with the wrong mentality from the beginning. I don't think the Augustana game really had much to do with it. I think from game to game, we do a really good job at you know, erasing what had just happened. Uh, I think uh, coming to each game, we're mentally and physically prepared, but definitely playing against Augie, it's always a tough game. Uh, it's a challenge uh, every game. We uh, came into Wesleyan, I don't think we were prepared enough. They ran their stuff, they executed better than we did. They knew our exact plays. They knew what we were going to do, and we just couldn't execute. Jamie, what's the update on your injury? Well, right now, uh, I have another appointment here coming up on Thursday, and hopefully there, then I'll be able to take my boot off and start uh, doing some rehab, hopefully some running. And what had happened was that it was just a chip fracture and basically just the middle of the foot sprain. So I'm kind of waiting for uh, the swelling to go down and kind of get back on my own. Well, you still found ways to entertain, even on the bench. I mean, you're still a very lighthearted, energetic guy. Do you feel like you take pride in still being a leader, even though you're hurt? Yeah, uh, we, have, we have three leaders on the team, uh, three captains, me, Chuck, and, me, Chuck, and Jack. Um, that being said, we all bring something different to the table. Jack is really serious and to the point what coaches, you know, coaches want done, he knows best. Chuck is you know, really aggressive. And I'm more of a lighthearted, you know, fun, fun type of guy. And so when I get, when I'm on the bench or whatever, I can kind of bring a little energy to the bench. And then the bench try to create some fun for everybody for the game. Erwin, you played with Jaleel Okafor and Paul White at Whitney Young University or Whitney Young. Um, what's it like, you know, coming here to North Central now? You're probably used to, to playing with great players because of of your past. Can can I assume that's true? Uh, Whitney Young, uh, definitely playing with Jaleel and Paul White was an honor. Uh, 
there I was a role player. Uh, our offense was get the ball inside. Whatever happens, happens. If he kicks it out, he kicks it out. Anybody gonna score off him. And here at North Central, I'm kind of a role player, but now with Jamie out, I have to step up. And I think I've done that most of the season. There have been games where I haven't scored or I haven't done anything, and I just gotta capitalize on that. But then again, I'm just a freshman and I'm learning right now. You know, and as a freshman, I mean, I've seen a steady progression in you as a player, especially lately. Has it been kind of just a matter of, of getting the reps and getting more playing time? Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, when we're not practicing, sometimes I can be in the gym uh, with other guys just working on my game, but definitely off the court. Uh, I like being with my teams, uh, team bonding, building chemistry. Uh, we just have to stick together. Jamie, how inspiring has it been to see Irwin step up in your absence? It's been great. It's been great seeing Joe Canal and uh, Irwin and all the other freshmen and other bench players step up. Because uh, with me being out, we lose you know a, a significant amount of minutes and points that I was averaging at the time. And but there's a lot of guys on our team that can step up and you know cover that up as shown against Augustana. And uh, I think that Irwin and Joe, you know, they bring a lot to the table and they just have to consistently be confident in the game and, and know that they are they're meant to be out there. Well, you'll be coming back at a, at a pretty tough time. I mean, we're getting to the postseason now, and by the time your injury is healed, you'll probably be in the thick of it. Is that something you're nervous about, coming back to full speed in such a you know crunch time? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I, I think with my injury, I think going into playoffs, if I can get as healthy as I can by playoffs, we're going to be a pretty scary team. Well, Irwin, part of you guys being a scary team, I mean, you go back to that game against Wheaton, uh, you've pretty much carried the team on your back in that one. Do you feel no fear? I mean, you don't seem like you're a freshman to me. Uh, well, coming to every game, I, I get mentally prepared. I look at the pictures of uh, my little sister and my Whitney Young team, and I say, I'm just going to do this for them. Uh, before the game, I watched film of uh, Kevin Hahn against Milliken when he had, uh, I believe it was 17 or 21 points, something like that. You know, I told him I looked up to him. Uh, I thought he was one of the good role models on the team and uh, that I wanted to be like him uh, one day. Uh, I came into the game, you know, before the game, they told me, if we're going to win this game, we need you. And uh, I just thought to myself, oh, they need me, huh? Uh, so I just came out and did the best I could do. Well, I mentioned it earlier with Technus. Uh, Jack Brichette, end of practice this week, said you can't lose again. Is that something you guys are both kind of feeling right now? Is that something, you know, last three games, got to win them all? Start with you, Art. Uh Yeah, I think that's definitely it. Uh, we had a struggle against uh, Westland. We lost the last game, but if we, you know, win out from here on out, I think we have a good chance to, you know, making a conference tournament in an NCAA tournament. Uh, we just got to keep going at it. Jamie, how do you feel about that? Well, it's it's towards the end of our season now, and uh, it's that time where we have to really start gearing ourselves towards the winner go home mentality. And so I, I do 100% agree with Jack that we can't drop any other teams from here on out. We have to really get on the each and every game route all the way to as deep as we can go in the playoffs. All right, well, hopefully you make a deep run, and thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, there are only a couple of games left on NCC's men's basketball schedule. Stay tuned to TCR for all the latest on the team's road to the postseason. We remind you to follow at NCTV17 on Twitter for up-to-the-minute news or log on to northcentralcardinals.com. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week on TCR.